Hi guys and welcome to another video of Minimal Nerd. Today we're gonna see the performance of the Hackintosh I have behind me here. So I've been using this Hackintosh for a few months now, since uh, 2019, and I've been really having a lot of fun with it. But uh, I got a lot of questions from you guys about how this Hackintosh actually performs and we're gonna try to compare it to the baseline Mac Pro, which starts at around $6,000. So first, we're gonna talk about the price, we're gonna see the specs, and then we're gonna see uh, other uh, parts of the software that run on macOS, like uh, Final Cut, Logic Pro. Uh, we're gonna test some video editing. Uh, I've been doing all my editing on this machine. So I've been using this for around uh, five months now since I built this one in late uh, November last year. And it's been running really well and I was really impressed by the performance. Um, I was looking forward to comparing it uh, with the Mac Pro, but I didn't get a chance to get it here in Vietnam. So uh, I'm just gonna compare it with uh, what other people you know, did and see their uh, benchmarks and then compare it with my Hackintosh here. So uh, I already made a video about uh, five reasons to choose or to go for a Hackintosh. So if you didn't check that one, you can check it down below. And um, yeah, we're gonna test this Hackintosh and see how it performs since you guys wanna know uh, all the, you know, all the benchmarks and how it does. Okay, let's get to it. Okay guys, so now we're gonna see the performance of the Hackintosh that you see here. So um, I'm gonna use the microphone so you can have the best quality. And let's uh, start now. So as you can see on the screen, as I can show you, first we're gonna start with the speed test of the uh, SSD, so Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So let's start here. So we have 2.9, 2.9, so uh, in my uh, in my testing, it was between three gigabytes and 2.9. So you can expect something around that 2.8, 2.9 gigabyte per second for read and write. Next, we can try the uh, Blackmagic uh, RAW speed test, which is uh, dedicated for the Blackmagic RAW video codec. So we can start here. First is gonna do the CPU. So we have 6K uh, rendering around 65 FPS. And on the GPU side using Metal is gonna be uh, 123 FPS. So that's really interesting. So after the 6K uh, uh, test, we're gonna do the 8K one. And to be honest with you, uh, I'm quite surprised about the results. Uh, especially with the uh, with the 8k one okay so we can stop the test now and let's change it to 8k 12 one okay so for the 8k one it's 40 FPS using the CPU and 77 FPS using the uh, the metal GPU So that's the result. Okay. Let it finish and then we're gonna move on to uh, a different kind of compression. Okay, let's change it maybe to 5.1. One. So the CPU is uh, 37 FPS and the GPU is 80 FPS. So that's, uh, to translate this for you, it means that the graphic card will be able to uh, read uh, the file, the 8K file, Blackmagic Row, uh, at 80 FPS. So um, if you have uh, 
like 30 fps video file then it's gonna do it without any issues and maybe two streams of the same file okay so let's move on next uh, we're gonna try um, some of the uh, oldest uh, benchmarks that a lot of people use uh, that's Unigine Heaven I actually have it here just one second documents okay so now we're gonna try uh, Unigine Heaven as you can see on the screen I'm gonna let it run and speed it up and then give you the results Okay, now we're gonna try um, Geekbench. So I'm gonna run Geek Geekbench 4 first. Okay, later. Okay, let's go for this one. Run the CPU benchmark. We have the results. Uh, so 6,243 for the single core and 36,800 uh, for the multi-core. So that's Geekbench. Uh, now we're gonna try to uh, run the uh, like the GPU benchmark OpenCL from Geekbench. Okay, so now guys, we're gonna see the stats for the temperature as well as the CPU performance. And I have here the app called iStat. So as you can see on the screen, uh, if we're gonna click on uh, different sections here, so the CPU is a you know is idle. Uh, we can see that it's using around two percent, three percent. I have some programs open in the background like Final Cut and Google Chrome, and here you can see the temperatures. So for the CPU cores from uh, number one to number eight, we have around 35 uh, degrees Celsius which is relatively, um, you know, uh, good temperature for CPU performance. And keep in mind, I live in a hot country, Vietnam. So that's a good result. And here for the, for the SSD, we have 55 degrees for uh, the first one and 39, 40 degrees for the second one. Now for the first one, I understand why it's a bit hot because it's uh, actually, if you can, if I can show you later, um, because it's under the GPU so the GPU is actually heating the SSD so that's the case and the second one is uh, far away from the, the, the GPU so it's a bit co uh, colder and then we have here the CPU cores we have uh, 0 08 volts now let's move on to um, the other stats so here we have the uh, Radeon 5700 XT as you can see uh, the memory usage and as well as the processor so now the GPU is not really used and you can see here the load over time I actually recommend this app if you're using on uh, Mac it's uh, very useful and yeah that's it so processes we have uh, the screen recorder that I'm using now as well as you know, uh, Final Cut in the background and Chrome. Yeah, that's it. So if you want to know more about the, you know, uh, how the performance will be of your Hackintosh. Now this gives you an idea. The memory, we're using about half the memory. So we have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So we're using uh, maybe around, uh, let's say 14 gigabytes. That's what I can see here. So um, the Mac I have here, um, as you can see on the screen, we're running uh, Mac OS Catalina. Uh, we have uh, the Core i9 9900K. We have 32 gigabyte of RAM and uh, Radeon 5700XT. And I have two terabytes of NVMe from Samsung and 970 Evo Plus. And um, the, uh, the fans and all of this that you see here is uh, optional. Like you don't have to go too fancy. So I'm gonna show you guys the the list of uh, you know of the parts so let's open chrome okay. 
I'm gonna go to PC Part Picker. Okay, so we're gonna choose the CPU. Here we have the Core i9-9900K. Okay, and this is the list that I have for my uh, PC. So the CPU, like I said, is the i9-9900K. I'm um, using the CPU cooler from Thermaltake. Then I have the, the motherboard, which is the Gigabyte Z390 Designare, which is uh, highly recommended for Hackintosh. A lot of people have success with it, including mine. Uh, also, we have the Corsair RGB Pro uh, RAM, uh, 16 gigabyte, two kits, so it's 32 gigabyte. Then we have the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe. It's really fast. It's almost three gigabyte per second. Then we have the Power Color uh, Red Devil uh, 5700 XT from AMD, and it's a really powerful card. And then we have the Leon uh, PC 011 Dynamic Case the one you see here. So this case is um, has uh, two fronts that are um, uh, glass and you can see the inside of the case. But for Hackintoshin, you don't really need to do it this way. I just had to um, you know, go with uh, something that is uh, elegant and aesthetically pleasing uh, because of um, doing videos on YouTube and also doing reviews for all this kind of like uh, PC builds and all the sorts. And that's it. And uh, for the monitor, uh, I have um, MSI uh, Mac 32 inch monitor with uh, a higher refresh rate, so 144 hertz and 1440p. Uh, for my use cases, it's uh, very fine for Mac and also for Windows when I play games. Uh, if you want to go with a 4K monitor, that's fine. Yeah, and now let's compare the Mac Pro to this Mac. So let's go to, okay, where is the Mac Pro? Here, okay. So let's go to buy. So we're gonna try to compare uh, the price of the Mac Pro to the Hackintosh that I have. As you can see here in the system builder, the price is around $2,600. And let's now go with the Mac Pro to have a similar uh, configuration. Okay, so eight core CPU, uh, 32 gigabytes RAM, the Radeon Pro 580X. Okay, so two terabyte storage. And we're looking at 6,700 or 6,800 US dollars. And this is less than half the price. So it's a uh, at least for me, it was a very easy decision and uh, I knew that I need to build a Hackintosh. But if you are a big uh, studio or a big corporation, then maybe, you know, having the reliability and also the support of Apple, a Mac Pro would be uh, also a good choice. Maybe if you're famous and rich and you have the money, why not? But for me and for a lot of people, I think uh, a Hackintosh is the best way to go. So thank you guys for watching this video. And if you have any questions about any other uh, software that I did not test and you wanna see, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be doing more uh, videos about Hackintoshin. If you guys wanna see a guide, let me know as well in the comments below. And I'm gonna do my best to guide you guys and, and you know, help you with Hackintoshin and you know discovering this new uh, world of, of hacking. So thank you guys and see you in the next one. Cheers.